Okay, so my mom made some homemade pierogies for me when I left Saskatchewan. And, uh, well, they were frozen and they're not frozen anymore. This is what, they, this is what they've turned into. But, uh, pierogies basically are dough that is wrapped around a potato filling. And so I have decided that I'm going to attempt to make almost like a dumpling out of these. So I'm actually going to combine the dough portion and the potato portion together and like drop them into boiling like salted water, almost like a noodle and make like a dumpling and cook it up that way. I will keep you posted how that goes, but this is what it currently looks like. A, it basically looks like a bag of dough. This is what it looks like right now. So I will uh, show you what it looks like after I do a little bit of my magic. And if I can, I'll try and do a bit of video and show you like what I did to save my progies because I'm sure we've all bought frozen progies that turned into a disaster. Maybe we can all save them. So yeah, that's what I'm about to do right now. As you can see, uh, I've gotten a bit of sunshine. I'm quite pink. I am not a tanner. I don't tan. <laughs> that's due to my Scottish heritage. So uh, I have two colors. I have red and white. So I guess I am destined to be a Canadian because those are my only two colors. <laughs> okay, so side note, I, <laughs> I am attempting to grow some plants in the van. Um, I don't know if this is going to work out really well. They do get light because I have the window in my side door so they do get filtered light and my mom specifically kind of picked plants for me that were like low light or reduced light or filtered light types of plants so that's what I've got um, I can't remember what this one is called in the front um, I would have to ask my mom about it but I do have this other one in the back. It is called Mother-in-Law's Tongue, which is kind of funny because I have no mother-in-law. But it's such a pretty plant. Like look how pretty, look how pretty that looks. With the birds and the wood. Like if, if these actually grow in my van, like seriously, that's like glorious. Like how beautiful is that and how much does that give you like some sort of like even if you end up having to like currently tonight I'm parking in a Walmart parking lot and I have these this beautiful greenery in my van and this beautiful wood on my walls and this beautiful metal on my roof and somehow that like distracts me from the fact that I can hear people pushing their carts around out in the parking lot and there's traffic driving by and I'm in a concrete parking lot. Somehow that distracts me from it. I mean, this isn't where I spend most of my time. Most of the time I'm, I'm like out roughing it. That's, that's like my happy place. But you know, when I do have those moments where I, I kind of have to like, you do what you do, right? Like you, you stay in a Walmart parking lot little touches like that in your van little things like that like if I can keep these plants alive that's like that's that's amazing because that is a game changer for mental stability it's a game changer for like making it feel like a home not n not like oh this is a temporary place that I have to live in because this isn't temporary for me. This is like, I love living my traveling life. So, you know, those few little plants, a couple little plants. Look at them again. So pretty. Ah. Oh. That is a game changer. For sure. 
Hundred percent. Peace, y'all. Okay, so what I'm doing is these are still in the bag. So I'm basically like combining these potato fillings with the dough. So they're gonna be almost like a potato bread, like a potato bread dumpling. Um, you can research dumplings if you want. There's all kinds of dumplings in the world. Um, common dumpling that my family so the common dumpling that my family eats is a Hungarian dumpling but there's Asian dumplings there's German dumplings there's dumplings all over the world basically what they are is some kind of dough that you drop into water and it's like a it's kind of like a noodle, but you don't turn it into a noodle, I guess. So maybe it's like, I don't know, like the, I tell you, the Ikea hack of hacking Italian pasta. I don't know exactly where dumplings originated or where they started, but basically what it is, is you take some kind of dough it's usually in a fairly large form sometimes it's filled sometimes it's not uh, a lot of Asian dumplings are a filled dumpling um, in this case uh, it's gonna be like a potato dumpling and whatever I don't use it, it will go in the garbage but I think that I'll actually be able to get like a really nice fluffy dumpling out of this uh, this is coming just coming from my cooking knowledge, my background knowledge of cooking. Um, I, I worked as a chef at several places. Moxie's is one of them. A couple bistros out in BC. I own my own bistro where I actually developed all the recipes myself. So I do have a bit of knowledge of cooking. I actually have to give full credit to my mom. She's the one who started me cooking when I was a very small child. So, shout out to mom. I love you. Thank you for engaging my love and passion for food. And thank you for the amazing month of wonderful mom cooking that I have had. And I can't wait to maybe have more. Uh, maybe on BC. I'm thinking you need to come to BC. I'm thinking that's the case. Anyways, I will keep going with this and we'll see what happens. You know, when it, sometimes when it's cooking, you're just, you're just winging it. And sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good. Don't beat yourself up about it if it turns out bad. I mean, that's the case with a lot of experimenting with food and just figure out maybe a way to make it better. Okay, so the water's boiling and I'm starting to see my so-called pierogi is floating, which is a good sign. Uh, after this process, if I want to, I could fry them and then you get like that nice crispy outside and the inside will be nice and fluffy. At the moment, I'll give you a little sneak peek of what they look like boiling in the water. Okay, so here's the water boiling. I'm just gonna pick a couple of them up. So that's kind of what they look like. I basically just took a tablespoon and just scraped a piece of the dough out. I threw it into the boiling water. I'll keep using the same water through the entire process. Uh, until I'm done with all of them and I'll just cool them on right now what I have is just a cookie sheet a sanitized cookie sh or cutting board with tin foil on it so I'm basically just going to set these on here to cool and then I'll put them into my cooler after that and yeah so from there I can fry them or I can just eat them the way they are I can uh, put butter on them. I can, I don't know, you can do all kinds of things with them. Treat them kind of like you would a noodle. Like, I mean, really, you could put pasta sauce on them if you wanted. But here is my first, like, Ben hack. So if you ever have those progies, 
that thaw out in your cool your like cooler or whatever and you need to do something with them here's an idea of what to do. okay I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of what the new oh, sorry the light is <laughs> a little bit weird there uh, let me give you a little sneak peek of what the noodles look like and then a little kind of other tidbit so let's go okay so this is basically what the pierogies turned into when I treated them like noodles so basically they were in the bag and I mushed all the filling and the dough together and I ended up with this so you could fry this you could throw it in soup you could just eat it like it is like I, I've just been snacking on it literally as I've been cooking it um, in this case I actually ended up with this so uh, you might be tempted to just dump this down the drain if you do buy cheddar progies or vegan cheddar progies I strongly recommend that you don't dump it uh, so if you have a, if you have a like cold space for this to chill or you have a fridge uh, I recommend that you put this into a jar or a container because especially if it's a cheddar version this makes an excellent base for a cheddar broccoli soup now you can put whatever you want in your soup obviously I have this left over so obviously I'm gonna do a recipe of my own version of a cheddar broccoli soup now think about if you make a soup in order to thicken it, usually you use flour. I've basically already gotten the thickened broth right here, right now. So I'm going to cook the base of like broccoli, onions, garlic, that kind of thing. And I'm going to put this into it uh, with some additional water. So this is basically like your already thickened base. So this is like skipping steps. Don't throw this away. This is like... This is like quality gold. Uh, yes, your pot <laughs> needs a thorough cleaning, but uh, a little bit of that is because it boiled over on me. But if you keep it under control the whole time, um, yeah. So I will uh, make the broccoli soup uh, probably in the next day or so. I don't know for sure when I'll post that video. But I will post the video and I'm coming out soon with my own website. So any recipes or anything that I develop while I'm on the road, they're going to be posted on the website. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, follow me, and I'm going to share all my fantastic tips of being a chef in a van.